Imagine this. It's late November 1994. You're on Thanksgiving break from school and you and your family have decided to go to the movies. You purchase tickets for the recently released The Santa Claus and settle into your seats. The projector light flickers on and the following trailer flashes onto the screen. I'm robbing a bank! It's across the street. Breaking in the bank. On Christmas Eve. It doesn't seem right. Trying to pull a heist. Who's got the key? Raise your hand. Oh, there's just no way to steal. Four left? As I start going, you idiot! From people to start nice. Why don't you come join my family for Christmas dinner? Dinner's on the stove. Smells good. Wait till you see the giblet gravy. <laughs> Mom is on her way. You guys are dumber than a box of hair. They're out to put the money back and save this holiday. You mind signing here, Mr. Anderson? It is a stunningly bad, incredibly bizarre trailer. A perfect representation of Trapped in Paradise, an almost cult classic. It's tough to find a more divisive Christmas movie than Trapped in Paradise. Critically, it became one of the most reviled films of 1994. The first reel, you're ticked off at them. Okay. And that's really a nice attitude to have to a comedy, angry. So stop jacking off, get the car and pick up this scum! Okay. Move! Yes, sir. On the surface, it appears to be a harmless Christmas caper. When you unwrap its layers of strange creative choices, though, you're left with a film production that makes for a more interesting story than the plot of the movie. Can we stop and uh, get some ring dings and milk? Ring dings and milk? Ring dings and milk! Oh, yeah! Then we can get some balloons, we can go to the puppet show. This film is the product of George Gallo, who had previously written Midnight Run, Wise Guys, and 29th Street the latter of which also marked his directorial debut. In these stories, Gallo specialized in the difficult task of making his criminal lead characters likable, assigning them redeeming qualities. You're doing the litmus configuration? Litmus configuration. Yes. And this is a theme that was the basis for his next film, Trapped in Paradise, which he would also direct. Once released from this prison, I, much like my reptilian brother, shall take wing and fly high above my problems. Ah, ah! But if we look at something like his script for Midnight Run, which is tightly paced, the script for Trapped in Paradise stumbles through its plot messily from the start. Yeah, imagine that. Trapped in Paradise revolves around three ex-con brothers, the Furpros, played by Dana Carvey, John Lovitz, and Nicolas Cage. Just passing through. And I know what you're thinking. Finally, someone cast these three guys to play brothers in a movie. I mean, just looking at them, you can feel their uncanny family resemblance almost leap off the screen, right? <laughs> oh, Honestly, the casting of Tracy Morgan in the new Twins sequel makes for a more realistic set of brothers than this movie. <laughs> I can see nothing's changed. Their characters are kind of Three Stooges-like in their dynamic. Yeah, well, this feeling you're getting is paranoia. I don't think so. Yeah, well, think again. Come on, let's just go. Bill, played by Nicolas Cage, is the boss. Why don't you let me do the cracking, and you do the jacking? He's the only one of the three to have gone straight, trying to lead a respectable life as a restaurant manager. Alvin, played by Carvey, is the childlike buffoon, kind of like Curly. While Dave, played by Lovitz, is the scheming middleman like Larry. Was way back in the Cretaceous period. And as far as periods go, it was a mother. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, Lovitz is more like Joe Besser. I know I didn't hear you right. Alvin and Frank become paroled to Bill's custody due to the prison overcrowding, and they soon find themselves back in trouble getting into a mix-up with police, and forcing them to go on the run on Christmas Eve. They end up in the small town of Paradise, Pennsylvania, which is really Ontario doubling as a picturesque American town. It is while in this town that they stumble into the perfect opportunity in the form of a virtually unguarded bank, which has recently received a deposit of $275,000. you mind signing here, Mr. And soon, Alvin and Frank talk Bill into regressing to his criminal ways, and the trio plot to rob the bank. You idiot. 
We're about to rob a bank, and you're gonna get us pinched for stealing hats? What? But on the way out of town, they wreck their car. Oh! Ow! Ooh! That hurt! And end up, as the title suggests, trapped in paradise. Being forced to spend Christmas in the home of the bank president they just robbed and his family. The bank was robbed this afternoon by three men. And on Christmas Eve? What's this world coming to? The Furpros are welcomed into this family and the community as a whole, with no one suspecting that they are the bank robbers. They happen to be the only other three male strangers in town and also have the exact same body types and voices as the thieves. She is a funny lady. How you guys doing? You know what? Um, they got some kind of feast out there, I'm telling you. Wait till you see the giblet gravy. <laughs> you know, Alvin, we're gonna be eating giblets in Attica if we don't get out of here. It turns out that Alvin and Frank learned of the Paradise Bank while incarcerated from another prisoner named Vic. Are you crazy? Who's gonna double-cross him? He's buried more people than Forest Lawn. <laughs> <laughs> who is soon released himself and sets out to avenge the men who robbed the bank that he intended to. The herald angels sing glory to that newborn king. Oh, that's the spirit we need in this house. An FBI agent, played by the ageless Richard Jenkins, is also soon on their trail. Agent Pizer? What? Agent Pizer? What? You're not gonna believe this. Oh, come on, try me. We got another alarm at the bank. Yeah, it's a little sloppy. But parts of it do harken back to those great screwball Christmas movies like Larceny Inc. or The Lemon Drop Kid. I only wish the writing had been a little tighter here, as the story itself is a pretty fun one, conceptually. I'm a sucker for comedies which feature criminals pretending to be someone else and learning the error of their ways from the generous people that take pity on them. <laughs> we got the beginnings of a real situation here. I just brought these people. I don't want to get to know them, alright? Supposedly, and it's hard to find any concrete evidence of this, George Gallo was dissatisfied with the production from the start, and gradually withdrew from it, leading to Nicolas Cage, the most experienced film actor of the leads, to direct portions of the movie himself. You are in my custody, you cannot go. So just quiet down, my little one, and call me Dad. Again, this is only speculation as little proof of this has emerged, but it seems everyone involved has bad memories of this movie. I guess this would definitely account for the overall unevenness in the performances, though. That car wash robbed itself. We were at the park all day. They didn't have a shred of evidence except for our fingerprints. Nicolas Cage is at his cagiest best here. If you're a fan of a truly unrestrained Nicolas Cage, and honestly, I don't know who isn't, then this movie is not for you. Expression on your face! Who are you? Four lips as I suck on you, idiot! I got the mayor of my ass on account of punks like you. Nothing better than that smell in the whole <laughs> wide world. <laughs> I'm getting this feeling. You're not telling me something. Hey. <laughs> ah! oh, you okay? I'm sorry, I just uh, stubbed my toe. Oh, yeah. Dana Carvey's performance is also a little out there. Come on, don't hold back, Ma. That's cream corn. Look at that stuff. One more. Come on, yeah, that's delicious. Can't beat it with a stick. Thank you. Yeah, load me up. It's great to be home, Ma. I gotta tell you. He's supposedly channeling a young Mickey Rourke here, and while it's a fun character, it just doesn't meld well with the others, especially considering he, Cage, and Lovitz are supposed to be brothers here. It's something that ain't right about it, you know what I mean? A lot of guys in here disagree with me, but uh, they're serving time. I'm up for parole. Connect the dots. <laughs> he gets to do a lot of great physical comedy here, though, and it's one of the redeeming qualities of the performance. Perhaps if these guys had been written as childhood friends instead of brothers, it would excuse some of their character inconsistencies. The uneven production, bizarre marketing, and overall odd creative choices caused Trapped in Paradise to be a notorious flop. It opened at number 7, in December, well behind movies that had been out for weeks already. 
I mean, even Junior in its second weekend. What a horrible thing to say. What's the truth? Despite this, I actually feel there's enough good in here to warrant checking this movie out. Mainly Nicolas Cage devouring the scenery like Santa Claus eating his cookies, but also a truly wild Dana Carvey performance, and John Lovitz being, well, John Lovitz. What is wrong with you guys? What do you have a couple of eggnogs with some farmers, and now you want to go back and work for minimum wage? It might not deserve watching every holiday season, but if you're looking to mix up your regular slate of holiday movies this year, Trapped in Paradise is a great place to start. Silent Night, Holy Night, Deathly Fidelity, God rest you married gentlemen. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la.